we can maybe go through some of the, the points you made in your um, your presentation, which yeah. again was tied to individual keto, how to do keto for your individual needs. And, and we can pull up, those topics are going to come up. We can talk about those things as they come up in this conversation so that hopefully we can help some people out there get good information and understand how they can shift the diet to, again, optimize their health. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So to kind of like preface this, like, the conversation isn't about, I'm not going to tell you a certain way to do keto. Like that's not what this talk was for. That's not what this information is going to bring you. What's going to help you do is it's going to help you understand the different macronutrients and then based off symptom analysis, how to apply different amounts of these macronutrients to your diet, because that's what it should be about. Like the ketogenic diet shouldn't be like, okay, 75% fat, 5% carbs, 20% protein right? It should be a diet that is a primarily fat fueled diet that has the byproduct of ketones, meaning it's primarily fat based. It burns enough fat to produce ketones. Like that should be the goal right now. Some people 75% fat does that 80%, some people 60, some people 50. Um, I've personally never seen someone need less than 50% fat for their daily macronutrient intake, but like, that's kind of like the whole point, the whole point I was trying to make, the whole reason I even gave the talk was because I was tired of seeing people saying, oh, my way's the right way, my way's the right way. And I was like, no, no, this is confusing. Like, like, oh, I'm PKT, oh, I'm TKD, I, oh, I'm THKD, oh, I'm animal-based, oh, I'm, uh, I'm on a lion's diet, oh, I'm strict carnivore, I'm CKD, I'm TKD, I'm HPKD. Like, it's like, okay, okay, everybody calm down, like, eat meat you know, sometimes eat some veggies. If you really want them and need them, have some fruit, right? Like let's simplify this a little bit because it's just gotten so confusing. The waters have gotten so murky. So the whole point of this presentation, the whole point of this talk was to help simplify things for people so that they could base it off of what they needed and not what their favorite influencer was telling them that they needed. I love it. I love it. Um. So, okay. So let's get into the fats. So really just kind of going over like different kinds of fats, right? So like, I think this is important. If you're going to apply something, you should know what it is, right? So you have like different kinds of fats, right? You have your saturated fats, your monounsaturated fats, your polyunsaturated fats, which are like your omega threes and sixes, and then your trans fats, which we all know are unbuenos. Okay. They're not, they're unbuenos. They're no buenos. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that I really wanted to preface too, and this is the kind of information as we go, I'm just going to continue to talk and you'll kind of grab onto how the presentation is formatted and the point of it. Um, for example, right, so saturated fat and monounsaturated fat, these two are both like the big heavy hitters of fatty acids, meaning like these are the two, if you eat these two, the other ones are probably going to come in at the perfect amount. Um, the good thing about them is that a lot of foods have both. Beef has both saturated fat and monounsaturated fat. So does fish. Um, and the beauty of it is, is that let's say that you're someone that can't eat meat because there are people that are alpha GP, GPT, uh, meaning like they can't absorb mammals well so like being able to eat fatty fish fatty poultry um or even if you don't want to do fish or don't do poultry you just want to do fish like you can eat these things have a higher more of like a mediterranean style still be strict keto and feel good and the reason why i think it's important to preface that is because some people feel like they can't do keto because they can't eat red meat and everybody out there and their dms are like why don't you eat red meat why don't you eat red meat and it's like oh if i'm not doing red meat why do i feel judged for not eating red meat and it's like you shouldn't like if you want to eat just fish and that helps you thrive and you're eating a higher fat diet and it's healing you, like who gives a flip what anybody that's eating jerky thinks about your salmon? Like you shouldn't care, but we do because of the atmosphere that we've created. And so uh, kind of prefacing that was really important to me is like, hey, like, you know, do what you need to do. And if that means eating more of like a Mediterranean style keto and like backing off of like the lion's diet, then back off the back off the red meat. Like that's okay. Um now, a couple signs that you're not getting enough fat would be things like, because we have, we, we, uh, I look at the macronutrients kind of like on a scale, like one of those old school scales, you know, where like, you know, you put some and it lifts and you kind of want to get imbalanced. And so I look at symptoms, right? So what are the symptoms here? What are the symptoms here? And then what creates that balance where you're getting both of enough of everything, but like you're, you're balanced, right? You're not seeing those symptoms. So like signs you're not getting enough fat are things like low mental clarity, low sex drive, right? The reason why is because if you're not getting enough dietary fat and your body's happened to type in a stored body fat could overstress your body, which is going to, can create mental fogginess. It also can uh, lower sex hormones, which is going to lower sex drive because saturated fat is the precursor to cholesterol, which is the precursor to sex hormones, huge swings in energy, just basically because if you're not getting enough fat, 
you could have some digestion and blood sugar dysregulation and then rough and dry skin because your cells are made up of fatty acids. And so if you're not getting enough fat and you're getting the wrong kinds of fat, your cell membranes aren't as healthy as they should be, right? I know plenty of people that start to eat more beef fat and all of a sudden their skin clears up. Totally makes sense from a biological perspective. Because you have to understand, like, I think one of the things that irritates me the most, so I'm not big on absolutes, but there's a couple absolutes that I believe in. Uh, one of them I'll say right now, I do not think fat is a lever. Like fat is not just a calorie. And it really does irritate me when people treat it like that. Fatty, like fat, it does not just, it's not just energy. It, it, it creates the structure of your cell membranes. Like I always tell people like, look at your hand, like look at your hand, like really take a second and look at this thing, move it around, you know, and like, think about the fact that it's made up of trillion, trillions of cells. That's what makes up your hand. Your hand is made up of these cell mem- cells with these cell membranes. These cell membranes are made up of fatty acids. They're made up of the, not only are they made up of fatty acids, they're made up of the fats you eat. So the fats you eat eventually become you, right? And I don't think people really take time to consider that. Like, you're literally made up of the fat you digest. So what kind of fats are you eating? So I do think that's important. It's like fat is fat is not a lever that you can lower your fat to lower your caloric intake, but realize that at some point, the cons will not be worth the pros because you're stripping not just calories from your body, but you're stripping the building blocks that it needs to function. Um, See, that's a really good point. I am of the habit of saying that fat is a lever. And you're right. It's so much more than that. And all the precursors to all the other hormones, it, it is so important. I need to get out of the habit of saying that. It's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. Like, it definitely can be lowered, right? Like, like, especially if you're on like a carnivore diet, right? Like, you know, cutting the fat off. So like, if you like, if you're like maintaining, you know, this is a real simple way of doing it is like, you have a ribeye and you have like the fat cap, you leave it on. If you want to lose weight, you cut the fat cap off, cap off, right? It's like 300 calories. You do that twice a day, you're going to lose weight. Um, It's like, it makes sense from that point. But I think that, and the only reason I'm against the terminology is just because like, it's the environment that it creates for people where like, they start to lose weight, but then they start to feel bad and their sex hormones start to suffer, but then they stop losing weight because their body's stressed out. The only thing they know to do is just to keep lowering fat. They never think That's to right. erase fat and lower protein a little bit just to help their body have a certain level of nutrients coming in while it's still losing weight. And so like, I think that just that, that level of the tunnel vision can really hinder like other aspects of your health without realizing it. Yeah, fair point. Um, yeah, so that that's fats, right? So that's generally fats, right? So like if you have huge swings of energy, you have low libido, low mental focus, rough and dry skin, like really consider upping your fats. If you have a hard time digesting animal fats, switch to fish fats. It's totally fine. Olive oil and avocado oil are also fine. Um, you want to try and get them from the actual fruits, like from avocado and from olives. But if you can't and, you know, always go for um, you want it to be from sourced from one location. You want it to be in a dark green glass bottle um, and boom, there you go. Uh, 